You know, I'm really, really getting tired of Anime Strike and its shitty-ass release. I know I complain about this a lot, but it seriously bugs the fuck out of me. I spent so much money on Prime and an Anime Strike, and they can't even properly upload the fucking series on a weekly basis. It's always delayed. Seriously. It's 2017. It's like the age of streaming. And they can't even get shit right. It just, it really, really bugs me. Because this is such a quality show. And, in all honesty, I feel like Anime Strike or Amazon is killing this series. I legit think that. And you want to know why? It's because it's not just the fact that they have it behind a double paywall. Or you can only watch it if you're in a certain country. But also the fact the delays are so fucked up. That it makes it where people are so out of sync with each other nobody really wants to watch it. Like, I mean, if you have a series coming out on a set time, for instance, like Boku no Hero Academia, it comes out at 4.30 a.m. every morning Saturday. You have a set time, you know what's going to come out. Unless it's not going to come out that day and it's on break, which next week it will be on break. Everybody has a set time, they understand when it's going to come out. However, when it comes to anything on Anime Strike, not just related to Welcome to the Ballroom, anything on Anime Strike, it can be delayed for 30 minutes, an hour, even 24 fucking hours later, it can be delayed. And yes, this has happened. Not once, not twice, multiple times. Way more than that. So, I'm just tired of it. I, I legit am tired of it. Seriously. Anime Strike, please. I mean, I know you're a new service, but you've had like an entire fucking season to kind of get your shit together. Please, just get your shit together. I'm tired of these delays. Seriously. Anyways, I'm sorry. I, I, I just needed to get that off my chest. I, I was just dealing with so many problems with getting the episode to run, and to watch the episode, because the site's always fucking crashing, the web browser's fucking shit when it comes to it, like the entire site and all that, just like, mmm. Uh, anyways, enough with the rant, I'm sorry, I, forgive me, okay? Anyways, I love this episode of Welcome to the Ballroom. On a positive note, okay? I, I actually really enjoyed this episode. It was a great, great episode of Welcome to the Ballroom, and in all honesty, probably one of the best episodes of the series to date. And the reason for it is because Fujita and Mako showcasing their skills, but also Fujita showcasing how much he has changed and developed as a dancer since episode one. He is on the stage. This is his first time he's actually doing a performance. Now, yes, he was a part of a dance room a while back, like two episodes ago, but it wasn't his time to shine. For instance, he was just, you know, a placeholder. And in this case, he's finally stepping onto the stage, and he's doing everything for himself. And we get to see his skills, and kind of how he is different, or how much he is changing and improving. And throughout his dance, you can see he has definitely got down the basics, and also he loves to be a little bit flashy. And we even see throughout the episode, he is someone that loves the attention focused on him. Which I love that. I really love that. We found out in the last episode, kind of what drives him. People are finally starting to notice him, focus on him, and it's making him have this feeling he never had before. And so, obviously, while he's on stage, he's dancing and all that in the hall, you have it to where sometimes he's not going to be noticed. And the reason for it is is because there's going to be better dancers. It's like this. When you're in a big auditorium and you have a bunch of people on the floor and they're playing like sports or whatever and the ball's going back and forth, usually everybody's eye will be focused on one person, whoever's holding the ball. It won't be focused on the others that are probably doing some form of work in the background helping out the person with the ball. And so you have it to where all eyes will focus on one person instead of the other people, which in result causes it to where people don't notice the people are probably putting and all that extra work, when in reality, you know, they're just focusing on the one that just has the ball. And this can also be said for games as well. I mean, in gaming, this is also said. For instance, anyone that plays like a support healer class, they're usually never noticed, and it's always the person that's the frontline person, always doing the crazy-ass kills and montages that look like they're doing the best. And so I do appreciate how this realistic aspect of real world is being integrated into Welcome to the Ballroom. When he looks at the, you know, the people, the judges and all that, looking, they're staring at Shizuku and also her, per her partner. You have it to where he's like, they're not looking at me. And you can see that he's getting upset about that because no judge is looking at him, nobody's looking at anybody else. They're just looking at one certain couple and they don't care. And the entire audience, everyone is just viewing one person or this one pair, which in result makes it to where they're not noticed if they perform properly. So it's hurting him. And since we have found out he likes to have the audience's attention, 
This makes it to where he doesn't like that feeling. So it'll make him want to improve and be a better dancer in the long term. So there was some examples of possible development for his character and why he will continuously drive to improve his dance and make it more and more flashy as he continues on. Because the best way to get anyone's attention, especially when you're doing something like this, is to dance in such an exotic way that nobody saw it coming. And that's kind of what you see. I mean, you see where he takes examples from previous people that have danced in front of him, and he starts to use their style. Fujita has shown that he can learn rather well. He is a very fast learner when it comes to dancing. He may not be, like, professional level, but he has still learned quite a bit, and he's able to pick up on it. And he has proved those skills, especially while he is dancing with Mako. Anyways, with that being said, though, let's talk about the, I guess, drama of the episode, but also the pairing of Mako and Fujita. So, Mako... I'm not going to go back into the same thing I've said for the last week's episode, how she's just so adorable, but she's fucking adorable. I, I do appreciate her character so much. Besides just saying she's cute, just the way she has these little things about her character that really stand out. Like when she's in the dressing room and all that, and you have Dora Fujita, he's just stunned by her appearance. He doesn't really know what to say because he's so embarrassed. She just gets up in the dressing room and she just closes the door. Just little details like that are just so cute, and it really adds a lot of depth to how these characters interact with each other. And you can see Mako and Fujita, they're very similar in their type of personalities. Fujita, he's very flashy, he's someone that likes to stand out, but at the same time, he has this streak about him that's very, like, he, he can get rather emotional. He can go into a state to where he feels like he can't do something, or at the same time, he can get embarrassed, and Mako is very similar to that type of personality that Fujita has, so they're very compatible as a pair, and I would continuously love to see them working together throughout the journey of this series. However, from what I have heard, and I'm assuming this is basically spoilers, but I was told in the comments last week that apparently Mako isn't the main girl of this series for Fujito, which is very interesting, honestly. I mean, I like Mako as a character, and if she really isn't the main female, I mean, I guess you could say she, uh, she's a cool, she's the main female, but I'm talking about the main partner. And if she, Mako, isn't the main partner, I'm kind of curious, who could possibly be the main partner and be better than Mako because Mako is so adorable she has great charisma and I feel like she's so compatible with Fujita it would just not make sense for her not to be with him unless the brother finally decides to take her back which I guess they'll get development on that front but still I'm very curious on where that will go and what many were trying to imply in the comments section last week anyways though Fujita he also has a big challenge to overcome now. He is on the stage, and he has to win up against, like, a professional couple. And obviously, their skill level is way higher than his, like, on a ho whole other level. He can't even really compare to how good they are, because they have had so much time to practice, he cannot probably stand up against him. Like, if it was a 2v2, just them going up against each other, those two pairs, he wouldn't stand a chance because that pair is just too flashy, they have too much experience, and so that would automatically make them on a higher level. It's kind of like saying a professional team, like sports team or whatever, going up against, like, a, a high school team. That's just how it is. And it just, it's unbalanced, unfair, but that's just how competition is. And so, Fuchida, for him to stand up to these two, this pair he's going up against, like Shizuku and all that, he has to do something that nobody would see coming from someone like him. For instance, since he's a beginner, he's a newbie, he's someone that many wouldn't expect him to know flashy things, he needs to do something flashy. He needs to do something that stands out, and everybody's like, holy shit, wait, did this new person just do something like this at his level? And, you know, he's competing with so-and-so? Many would be shocked if he did that. So I could see because of the type of character Fujita is, and why he wants the audience attention and all that, because that drives him to continuously progress, I could see him doing something rather very crazy in the next and final part of the finale of this dance. Anyways, though, but speaking of the art animation, besides the long necks, I gotta say that Welcome to the Ballroom is still 
remained very consistent with its animation art since the beginning of the series. And I'm very glad to see that because it is definitely a series that requires a good studio working on it and a very nice team that really cares about the nitty gritty of this series because with uh, this series being about dancing, there's going to be a lot of movements. It ain't like a typical, like, like, we could sit in a room and have characters talk with each other. That's not this type of series. You're going to have it to where the characters are going to be moving so much, stretching their arms, moving their head around, moving their legs. There's going to be so much movement to where the animators are going to have more work to deal with than they normally would from a regular series. And so I figured I would start to see a lot of flaws throughout the show, especially with art and animation. No matter how good a studio is, every studio can fuck up. Uh, even Studio Bones, even Studio Madhouse, even Studio Fotable, every studio, every studio can fuck up when it comes to art and animation. Regardless of how good they are or how well-renowned they are, they can fuck up. Everybody makes mistakes. But I expected to already see some major decline in art animation, but that hasn't happened. I mean, there's been some few scenes in between shots that are like, eh, but it's nothing like, ugh, that's disgusting. Like, that's just straight disgusting. It's like no episode 5 of Dragon Ball Super level. So, I, I think that so far, it seems like Welcome to the Ballroom is in a very, very good spot. It's in good hands, and it's continuously been a good series from this anime season. It's definitely retained to be one of my favorites, and possibly anime of the season. I definitely hold it with high expectations because of what I've already witnessed. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.